we got one, two, three new trailers for the FNAF movie. A leaked set photo gives us a new look at Golden Freddy. Withered Bonnie is now confirmed for the FNAF movie. The Five Nights director has revealed some huge details that will shock you. And are these our best looks at the animatronics so far? All of this and more on the internet's number one FNAF movie news show. This is Slurps Behind the Scenes. Slurp heads, brace yourselves. Another week means another jam-packed episode of Behind the Scenes. And trust me, we're bursting at the seams with FNAF movie news. I mean, with the Five Nights flick just around the corner, the FNAF world is going bonkers. Now, a quick heads up. For the rookies joining us on this journey, we sometimes get a dad spoiler happy. Nothing major, but consider yourself warned. You still with me? Let's delve into another electrifying episode of Behind the Scenes. Okay, Slurpheads, let's kick off this episode of Behind the Scenes in true style with, you guessed it, a behind the scenes photo from the set of the FNAF movie. The Twitterverse, uh, Xverse, was set into frenzy this week thanks to a captivating snap that offers a peek into the making of the now iconic scene. We're of course talking about Abby and Golden Freddy standing hand in hand outside of the pizzeria. To our loyal followers, does that ring a bell? Yeah, this is the exact shot they gave us in our inaugural glimpse of the FNAF movie. Plus, eagle-eyed fans might have caught this at the tail end of a trailer or two. So, where did this gem emerge from? Twitter user, X user, whatever we're calling it. Entom DP is their name, and they certainly know how to stir the pot. The caption on this post was honestly pretty hilarious. They mentioned discovering the photo on some random dude's Instagram. Not a filmmaker, just a regular guy who somehow made it onto set. You know, there's something about these behind the scenes glimpses that always excites me. As we inch closer to the film's release, I've got a hunch we're going to be showered with more and more of these tantalizing teasers. Here's a fun, yet mildly terrifying fall. We're near in a world post FNAF movie release. Can you even imagine this series in that timeline? FNAF movie 2 behind the scenes, let's go! Regardless, once the actor strike comes to an end, and here's hoping that soon, I bet we see a barrage of these kinds of posts from the cast, pulling back the curtain on their experience during production. So keep your eyes glued to this series, because we ain't slowing down anytime soon. I've got a piping hot bunny nugget for ya. Straight from Cinemark Theatre's floor, a larger than life cardboard cutout standee display for our most anticipated Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Now, you might be thinking, Connor, are you for real? Every piece of marketing material that lands in theatres is news now? Well, if you keep watching the show, then heck yes. But there's actually a twist in this tale, or should I say arm? Oh, Bonnie's missing a whole damn limb on this standee. Did somebody say lore? It feels like a cheeky teaser for what's coming. Ready for his close up in the sequel maybe? For those diving deep into FNAF history, it echoes back to Withered Bonnie, the OG pre-revamped version from FNAF 2. But remember, that game was technically a prequel. Will the movies follow suit, or would that just muddy the waters? I'm leaning towards a fresh start for Bonnie, a gradual transition, whether in a way across the movie trilogy, which we know is planned. But that's just my two cents. What do you think? Is Weathered Bonnie a hint of what's to come? Or maybe this cardboard cutout just lost her limb in transport? And between me and you, am I stretching? Or does this smell like a legit teaser for Withered Bonnie? Alright, before we get to the meat and potatoes, Governor, here's a tasty appetizer for ya. Remember when we chatted about Freddy and the gang making a grand appearance at Blumhouse's Behind the Screams at Hollywood Horror Nights? Well, hold on to your party hats because this week a snippet started making the rounds. In this clip we hear from the attraction's narrator or tour guide or whatever fancy title they're rocking and they drop a bombshell. The real tangible movie animatronics that are the star of the show? The talented folks at Jim Henson's Creature Shop took a whopping 15 months to put them together. Yes they are real, these are the authentic screen used animatronics from Five Nights at Freddy's. It took 15 months to construct, they were made by Jim Henson's Creature Shop 
So please look, don't touch. Given the near eternity, okay, maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but it feels that way, that this movie's been cooking in the oven, I should have seen that coming. The sheer dedication and craft poured into these iconic characters, it's tangible. It leaps out, and I mean, come on, who isn't chuffed that they went old school with these practical effects for the animatronics? It's like a love letter to classic horror. But wait, we still got more behind the scenes details on these animatronics. And who better to spill the beans than the director of the movie herself? Come on then, why don't we find out what she's got to say? Okay, Slurpheads, before we dive deep into the treasure trove that is the physical print issue of Total Film, we've got some online exclusive goodness from the outlet to unpack, and don't fret. We'll get to that print gold mine soon enough. First off, we got a brand new exclusive look at Five Nights at Freddy's in all of its cinematic glory. Josh Hutchison's mic holding Abby in a tight protective hug, their faces filled with unfiltered terror. Whatever's going down in the movie in this moment, it's got our lead spooked out of their mind and I can't wait to see it unfold on the big screen. Not long to go. Elsewhere in this internet exclusive, Emma Tammy, the director of the movie, dished out some intriguing details about the film cinematography. She said, Also, just the haunted house element of it was such a big influence. Some of our scenes that have to do with our main character's backstory and memory were also influenced by a Terrence Malick-esque camera style to give them a more dreamlike quality. Those scenes that were taking place in forest campground settings. There were a lot of different types of references we were pulling to really craft something that felt unique. The gears in my head are spinning. With Tammy's words in mind, those mysterious sequences in the trailers where Hutchison seems to be haunted by ghost kids are now making a little bit more sense. The fandom's been a buzz suggesting that these might be the dreamlike sequences that Tammy's talking about. Now let's turn our attention to the wonderful print edition of Total Film Magazine. I totally didn't spend hours running around the city in the rain to find this. But enough with my escapades, let's dive into the juicy details, shall we? In the print magazine, Tammy explains that her introduction into the FNAF universe came with Jason Blum's ringing endorsement, who believes she'd be the right fit for the movie adaptation. An amusing anecdote from Tammy was her unfamiliarity with the game itself. Though she had a Chuck E. Cheese experience under her belt, Tammy goes on to explain her approach with the animatronics. They should exude a sense of eeriness, enough to make your skin crawl. Simultaneously, they're to be alive, magical, and even hilariously goofy and awkward. Balancing these elements is indeed no child's play, and Tammy acknowledges the struggle to find the right blend throughout the storyline. Diving deep into the making of this film, Tammy discusses the movie's collaboration with the Jim Henson Company to create these real monsters. It's not just about nostalgia for the 80s and 90s films, but about bringing an authentic touch to the movie. Real animatronics, real scares. The puppeteer team received high praise from Tammy, though she cheekily compares the animatronics to high maintenance actors, given the technical limitations they come with. She specifically says, I say high maintenance because there's only a certain amount of time that servos can operate before you risk blowing them out. Drawing from a vast pool of cinematic greats, Tammy shared her inspirations. From Spielberg's endearing charm to the somber tones of Joker with a dash of Terrence Malick's visionary camera work, the movie aims to be a visual and emotional spectacle. Tammy wants the audience to be pleasantly surprised, promising a film that's dark, supernatural, zany, emotional, and of course, scary. Okay. So what are the major takeaways from this interview? Emma Tammy taking the reins of Five Nights at Freddy's could be a risky choice in the eyes of some fans. After all, she wasn't initially a Freddy's fan. But we have to remember, Scott Cawthorn is in the writer's seat and that does enough to comfort me. Now here's a point I'm sticking to. Major respect for the commitment to the animatronics, even with the technical limitations that Tammy was speaking about. It's heartening to see that despite the rise of CGI, Blumhouse and Tammy chose the authentic route with the animatronics. It's a throwback to the movies many of us grew up with and adds tangible depth to the horror. And I'll tell you what, 
Tammy's comments about the film's tone definitely sparked my interest. I've been banging on about a Gremlins-esque horror approach and I actually feel like it might be on the horizon. This unique thematic blend might be exactly what this franchise needs in this cinematic rendition. All in all, the anticipation is high. If this movie delivers half of what Tammy promises, fans and newcomers alike are in for such a treat. Oh, after that mammoth news story, let's dive into a snappier piece that will surely get the hearts of all you Terminally Online FNAF fans racing. And thinking about it, if you're a FNAF fan, the Terminally Online part is kind of redundant, huh? I tease, I tease. Ever heard of Giphy? For the uninitiated, it's the awesome spot for all those quirky gifts when you can't think of a text response. This week, Giphy leveled up by launching an official FNAF movie page, bustling with brand new gifts. This means fresh new animated glimpses of our favourite animatronic pals and more. As Chica's self-declared number one fan, brace yourselves, I'm using this GIF everywhere. Every single internet scenario. Prepare yourself for Chica GIF Overload. <laughs> Yes, that was my attempt at the FNAF trailer theme. Don't say anything. But you know what that signals? It's trailer time. This week blessed us with not one, not two, not four, but three spicy new TV spots. Let's dive right in. First up on the menu is a web spot revealed on Universal Pictures Brazil's Instagram. A heads up for all of you, among this week's new drops, this one's got the slimmest pickings in terms of new footage. But hey, I'll let you be the judge. Você já conheceu eles? Eles quem? Fred, Bonnie, Chica e Foxy. What did I tell you? Even though we didn't get heaps of fresh new content, I'm gonna take any morsel, including this extended look at Foxy sprinting down the corridor. But wait, there's more. We've got a second web spot which made its debut on Hong Kong Universal Pictures Instagram. Let's take a look. Have you met them yet? <laughs> Whoa, if you blinked, you might have missed that. Shorter than the previous one, but oddly enough, it packs in more fresh content. Freddy, Bonnie, and wait, wait for it. Yep, and our girl Chica, they all made an appearance. From my probably way too extensive trailer analysis, I'm putting my money on this scene in particular taking place when Abby's hiding out in the ball pit. Now, it's time to move on to the third spot of the week. It's a rapid fire one, but there's a lot to unpack here. Stick around and we'll break it down together. Jeez, six seconds and yet a treasure trove of details. Where to begin? How about the start? Did you spot this brand new look at Spring Bonnie? The trailers have kept him under wraps for the most part, making his full reveal in the final film even more spine chilling when it eventually happens. We also see Mike, our leading lad, limping down a hallway. Which of these menacing animatronics got to him? While the likely culprit might be Spring Bonnie, I've got to stay loyal to my babe Chica. But here's the cherry on top. All of you diehard fans who have been with FNAF since day one, did you hear the musical choice in this trailer? Let's play it again just in case you missed it. Did you hear that? That's our buddy Foxy serenading us from Pirate's Cove, an easter egg from the OG FNAF game, where every four seconds with Foxy tucked inside Pirate Cove, there's a 1 in 30 chance of hearing this haunting tune. They included it. This film's just oozing with details and points like this for fans like us to pick out. This is shaping up to be a bloody masterpiece. Slurpheads, before we draw the curtains on another week of behind the scenes adventures, let's cap things off with one final piece of news that's got me buzzing and grooving. 
This week, the great fine has it that the Newton brothers are teaming up with the iconic Tyler Bates to craft the musical score for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Wondering where you've been graced by this harmonious touch before? Well, this dynamic duo is no stranger to the world of horror and spine-tingling melodies. They've lent their talents to movies like Doctor Sleep and Hush, and for those who have been binge-watching from the comfort of their couches, you'd recognise their work from Netflix to Haunting of Hill House. A film score isn't just background noise, it's the heart and soul of the frickin' movie. It shapes the mood, builds tension, and guides our emotions throughout the narrative. A good score can elevate a scene from memorable to legendary. And in the world of horror, it can be the difference between a mere jump scare and a sleepless night. Personally, after being absolutely enchanted and slightly terrified by their work on Doctor Sleep, which was brimming with eeriness and tension, I'm hyped to hear what the Newton brothers will bring to the table for FNAF. If their past masterpieces are anything to go by, we're in for a real auditory treat. Alright Slurpheads, as we wrap up another roller coaster week on Behind the Scenes, let's take a swift jog down memory lane. We chat about those tantalising new TV spots, dove deep into animatronic details and checked out some behind the scenes photos for the much anticipated movie. But let's cut to the chase, I know the moment you've all been waiting for. Can I get a drum roll please? We're only 32 days, yes, 32 days away from Chica Supremacy. It's so close I can almost hear Foxy's pirate tune. Oh wait, that was just a TV spot from earlier. Honestly, the anticipation is so real, it feels so real. I mean, am I actually ready for this? If you don't want to miss out on a single update, beat or note from us, remember to smash that subscribe button. A colossal shout out to the Slurp community, our loyal Slurp heads. You make this ride worthwhile and we absolutely cherish crafting this show for you every single week. This was Connor for Slurp. I'll see you in the next one. Hey Slurp heads, don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss this. For a limited time only, we've opened the doors to the most glorious place on Earth. Our Discord server. That's right, for a short period of time, our server is open to the public, and we want you to join us. If you're a movie, gaming, or pop culture enthusiast, our community is the ultimate destination for you. Plus, we're not just offering an incredible community, we're also doing giveaways. That's right, we're giving away Amazon gift cards and games to lucky members of our community. Our server is a safe and inclusive space where everyone is welcome. Connect with fellow enthusiasts, share your opinions, and stay up to date on the latest trends and releases. So what are you waiting for slurp heads join our discord server now while you still can the clock is ticking Mama, tell me do you believe in all